to Tabula Rasa, bitches. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> my name is Allie. My pronouns are she, her. And I am Nick. And my pronouns are he, him. And welcome, because apparently we're speaking so, to season two, episode 12 of Tabula Rasa, bitches. <laughs> we're thrilled to have you here. We're in Tabula Rasa, bitches. You're too cool <laughs> to just need to the way of our slayer. A show that bonded them together. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll go to a happy medium here. Ali, these okay. double recording things, I get a little slabby by the end of it. We'll get even sillier. No, but I think that makes us funny. I think so too. Hopefully, the audience will enjoy it. I enjoy it, folks. In this episode. That's all that matters. We enjoy it. <laughs> hope you do too. We hope you do too, but the most important thing is that we do. It's not crucial. It's ideal, but it's not. Yeah. I'll still be slabby. We'll still be here. We're going to be <laughs> discussing season two, episode 12, Bad Eggs. Fucking hate this episode, dude. I can't wait to hear. I, I don't hate this episode. Hear about it's just this. Like... Yeah, but you, you, Nick texted me earlier today. I hate this episode, and my answer was, I can't wait to hear about it. So, as usual, we'll do our best to avoid spoilers beyond this episode, but we will discuss this episode, spoilers and all, on a mom-sponsored shopping trip to the mall. It's the best kind of Buffy's... shopping trip to the mall. Hundred percent. Uh, yeah. More often with Julie, it was Target, but that worked too. Uh, oh, um, love fuck up yeah. Target, man. Oh, oh God, yeah, love back Target. to school shopping. <clears throat> yeah. Buffy's errand to pick up clothes from the tailor is interrupted by Lyle Gorch. Uh, I wrote this word, uh, Lyle, in my note a hundred different ways. <laughs> I could have just looked it up and solved it. Anyway, one of two vampire brothers from the Wow Wow West. Buffy and Lyle fight, but he gets away, cryptically saying, this ain't over. The next day in school, Xander and Cordelia continue to keep their relationship secret, aside by Allie, at least out loud, because suspicious side eye. <laughs> uh, during a sex education class, students are given raw eggs to look after as an exercise in responsibility and parenthood. The eggs are not chicken spawn, but cont contain mind-possessing face hugger creature taking over the school. Xander avoids being taken by the simple <laughs> expedience of boiling his egg to make it easier to look after. Buffy is attacked by her egg late at night, but kills it with a pair of scissors. Way to go. The rest of the gang, including Willow and Cordelia, are possessed and knock out Buffy and Xander, stuffing them in a utility closet. When Buffy and Xander wake up, they learn that there is a giant Bezor demon under the school, which is laying eggs. But... Uh, Buffy and Xander fight their way into the chamber where the Bezor lives, but the Gorch brothers also arrive and fight some of the possessed. The egg-laying demon eats the younger Gorch brother, and Buffy is sucked in, but she soon emerges covered in blood. Lyle Gorch wisely bugs out. The episode closes with Joyce assuring Buffy that she will be grounded for the rest of her life. Shout out to Buffy Guide, from which the summary was adapted. Shout out indeed. There is a lot in this episode. I have so many questions at the end of it about this demon and the eggs that look like chicken eggs, but are clearly like demon eggs. And this isn't this. I don't I don't dislike this episode in the way that I dislike some of them where it's like aspects of this really aged poorly. Um, mm -hmm. I just dislike it because it's like. What? It just feels like, I mean, I will get like the themes of like approaching sex and there's some other overtones and that like I get it for the overall show development, but it's just, uh, it's just a, it's a low one for me. We kind of muscle through it. I also hate creature features. I don't like the mm -hmm. okay. crawly. Well, then this, this one would, certainly wouldn't be for you. You know, you know, sorry to bury the lead there for all of our. Friends, I'll flesh wow. out my thoughts more as we go along. That's but. all good. Um, my notes started much simply with a question. Do you like eggs? I don't. Actually, I'm not a huge fan mm -hmm. of eggs. I like um deviled eggs. Oh, fuck Ew. up some deviled eggs. Ew. You don't like deviled eggs? I cannot say that I've tried them. Because they smell so god awful. No, they don't. That I have never, never deigned to try them. Uh, my mom what? makes deviled eggs every Easter and sometimes for other occasions, and it stinks up the whole rest of the house, and it is 
so disgusting. So, yes, uh, because of that and because of that revulsion, I have never brought myself to actually try one. I would like an invite to your house for Easter so that I can... You are can... always welcome at Easter. We play games. We, the same way we are really extra about Thanksgiving, we are really extra about Easter. Which is so, weird okay. because, I mean, think, thanks. Easter's a religious yes, because holiday. It, because it's a religious holiday. Well, because it, it's just tradition. And y'all aren't religious at all. No. No. I mean, our... Family friends who we met through church are still religious, but we just join in. And Julie has always read, led the Easter games, and so that's what just what she continues to do because we all enjoy it and we all just gather. Because you know, it's not like there's praying in Jesus at the Easter event. You know, everyone goes to church and then they go to the Easter event. So we just skip that first part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I look forward to confirming that you're being crazy about this but what is your preferred method to eat eggs scramble we are six or minutes in and i've already called you crazy once i'm gonna shape up my attitude about this episode and not put it all on you what is your preferred method to eat eggs you gorgeous brilliant not crazy human thank you um scrambled in an omelet or in a baked good that is it <laughs> okay, we're including baked good. Okay, I love cake. Not really. That is why I that's why I left it for last. But if we're just talking like eggs, scrambled or an omelet. Yeah, I don't love scrambled eggs. I don't love omelet. It. Yeah. I don't always love I, I'll like go through a phase where I'm like, I'm really into scrambled eggs. It's a great quick breakfast thing. It's really satisfying. And then all of a sudden I'll just be like, Ugh. Yeah. I'll get turned off of it. So um I go through sh- short stretches, but that is the only way. So, like, you know, all the other ways I, I do not do. Flagpole. Like, well, yeah. So yeah. this opening scene, Buffy and Joyce are in the mall. Buffy has evidently wanted some sort of outfit that she probably looked incredible in because Buffy would look incredible I in anything. Bet she did. And Joyce was basically like, absolutely fucking not. Yep. She said you would look like a streetwalker. And Buffy says, but a thin streetwalker. <laughs> Hmm. Always focusing on the important things, Buff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, uh, they decide that Buffy is going to go pick something up from the tailor. Joyce is going to get them food and pick up prints for the gallery. Then they're going to meet up. And um, so we see Buffy go down the escalator. Um, before she before she leaves, I can't remember what Joyce says that Buffy makes fun of. But uh, Joyce says, do now. Make fun of your mother later. She's recognizing that she will be made fun of. That's good. Right. Like, that's regard. That's going to happen, whatever. But, like, just be productive while you when do When I it. heard that line, that was, to me, I I had the feeling of um, that's something that uh, Julie Press would say. 100%. And I think that's why I really, I've always vibed with Joyce, because she feels so, so real mm-hmm. as a mom. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of what she does and what she says feels very authentic to a mom and maybe because she reminds me a lot of my own mom um but i i i guess maybe i'd never seen a parent on tv who was expressed that authentically who was written that well yes yeah, maybe that's why i always get defensive of choice fair enough fair enough well coming after our last episode that must have been rough for you thanks for <laughs> indulging me in a spirited discussion i'm all about discussions so buffy i have a fashion sees- note Oh, oh, oh. Before we fashion even note. get to who she notices, the fashion note, she's riding the escalator down. Girl has a Kate Spade bag. Does she? Yeah, yeah, it's a Kate Spade backpack. That thing. must be that must be from one of her summer shopping trips with dad. I, when he was buying True. Her yeah, stuff. good callback to the shopping trips. True. I bet you're right. I bet that's I bet cuz I don't think Joyce is paying for Kate Spade bags. Yeah, Joyce was like, oh. No, that's that hardcore seems like a clueless dad just sure dad it's throwing like, money at the problem cost, makes you okay. happy yeah whatever yeah okay your valuable point she's going down yes so this is a really cool moment although i didn't initially realize what the moment was so she looks over she sees a guy canoodling with a girl she kind of glances to the other side and she sees just the girl and my first thought was there's two of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then she looks back and sees that the dude's there. And then I was like, oh, mirror. She doesn't see the dude. Dude's a vampire. Got it. But that was 
not initially clear to I noticed that she acts quick like she yeah she notices it she looks over she sees she sees I mean it's a it's a really obvious explanation no but she you know sees the lack of reflection and there isn't even a second that she ponders she jump she nope she immediately knows what that means and then starts going up the escalator which would call well, she, they're going i mean the uh, hell of a lot of attention up, to yourself so but 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 yeah she jumps right yeah. into action right away yep 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 yeah and so she follows them into the arcade which is somehow empty like it's open because she goes in because the two of the vampire and this chick go go in she's playing pinball but no one else is there and there was a gate so it could have been either at closing time or oh maybe they really broke in it. but but they like the machines are all on i think that they would turn yeah. the machines off at the end of the night but they're playing you would in, think so. so but maybe they hadn't gotten to that part or i don't know i don't know i was just like this is empty but I yeah maybe they broke questions in questions abound in this episode maybe this can That's... just be the start of them yeah i think there's a whole bunch of this stuff that needs to go in the basement because i had lots of questions about the bees or and yeah I uh, oh me yeah. too good I'm excited to explore them so the girl I think it's funny that the the girl who's with the vampire and um, Buffy's kind of like making fun of the two of them because she knows that he's a vampire and she yep. and the girl the like would be victim doesn't realize that obviously. yeah because he's behind her yeah. and and the girl is like sassing Buffy she's like right why are you like she's like, like excuse me yeah ooh, ooh. Um, who invited you yeah and then she turns around. And she's like, and, and is like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> Smart choice, lady. Smart choice. So they have a little fight. The vampire introduces himself as Lyle Gore. She says something, something like that Southern hospitality. Yeah. Even if you're gonna kill somebody, apparently, you still gotta introduce yourself. And he says something like, "You must be that Slayer that I've heard so much about." They're really. I feel like they've started this episode kind of um, building it like he is going to be the one this week. Like he's going to be the monster of the week or something. And I guess he kind of is, but not. It's it's some fun misdirection. Yeah. Yeah. They do a little bit of a swisheroo, which I like. So the, so he said he says like he eventually runs away. He says this ain't over. And Buffy goes to uh, back to her mom without mm-hmm. the dress from the tailor. And, yeah. and her mom says, do you have this written down? I don't. She says, let me guess. You were distracted by a boy. Yeah. And Buffy says, well, technically. Technically. Yeah. yeah she's yeah. wrong. Yeah. I, so I, the, the quote I wrote down was, oh, bliss, small food. Okay. I guess I'm a garbage person. I love mall food court. Because if you think about, like, what are the things in you get the Chinese food place oh, that yeah. just piles so much, gives you so much food. Oh, yeah. You have, like, Mama Lardo's, which just has, like, really good pizza. Yeah, I mean, you have Cinnabon, Annie Anne's. Like, I love mall. I think of, I have the genuine version of that quote when you know, when I go to the mall. What is I, What is more satisfying than, like, a shopping break to fuel up for more shopping. Like, I love the mall. And it's one the of the things of, I've missed with quarantine is the mall. It's the type of food, too, that you're going to get. Like, you'll probably crash real hard. If I devour a brown sugar cinnamon pretzel, I'm going to have a burst of energy and then crash right away. And that burst of energy, I'm going to do some damage with yep. that sugar rush that I have. Fuels you through, and then you drive home and you crash. Yeah. Uh, it's great. I, like I said, I love them all. I, uh, I do too. But then I wrote, but then I wrote, I can see Joyce's side in in her upset with like Buffy not getting this because it like Snyder, if you don't know what's going on, she really does look like a fake, a flake, not a fake, a flake. I I give she really Joyce, comes off very irresponsible. I give Joyce credit here, which it feels like a whiplash because we just recorded the previous episode where I didn't give Joyce any credit, not one single shred of credit. But <laughs> I give Joyce credit here because she is like. You're like annoyed, but not mad. She's like, I'll just make time to pick it up tomorrow. It's fine. No, but she, yeah, but she is, she's understandably upset. Like she, and unfor- and it, I think it also, it piles on because like, it's, it's even more disappointing because she's not surprised, which means it's a habit, which means it's just like that sinking feeling of like, I just can't count on you, which is a disappointment. She and says, I, yeah, so I get where she is. She says, a little responsibility is all I ask, which, ouch, that probably hurt. 
Yep. Especially when you know all that Buffy is doing. She right. just saved a girl's life, but she can't tell her that. Right. Like, she is the most responsible. Right. The fact that she even still shows up to classes is amazing and is a huge sign in the context of her life. It's huge that she's responsible. That any homework gets turned in, that any tests are sad for, are amazing. Yeah. But, like, again, from Joyce's point of view, it just it, it just must look like, like, I know you're a good person. I know you're a good person. So why don't you just, like, why won't you just shape up? Why won't you just, like, stay in, you know, stay in school, do your homework, do the simple things that I ask yeah, you to do? Yeah, go to the library. That was very she's clear not even asking. She's not even asking Buffy to, like, get involved in an extracurricular, take up some... You know, she doesn't, she's not expecting her to, like, go join National Honor Society and, like, start doing charity work. She's like, I would just love for you to do the basics. Um, and this this theme of just responsibility, just, like, mm-hmm. basic responsibility and parenthood and, like, all, mm-hmm. like, maturity is really this dialogue between the two of them really sets the tone for other themes that are prevalent in this episode. Absolutely. Which I hadn't even really... It sounds so ridiculous that I hadn't really picked up on the theme. It's not that I, yeah, I just like hadn't examined the like full scope of the theme. But yeah, it really does. It really is all about responsibility. It really all comes down. There's this build up about sex and things are heating up between Buffy and Angel. Yeah. So we get to the next day at school. They're appar- it's apparently come to the uh, human aspect of biology class, or maybe it's their family sciences, whatever it is. Uh, the teacher is talking about sex and he's talking about hormones raging and who has, you know, have you ever felt the impulse and like all these things about basically like being a teenager with raging hormones? And this <laughs> is like, yes, 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 I have. And the teacher says, that was a rhetorical question, Mr. Harris, <laughs> not a poll. <laughs> Uh, and I feel, and they just Xander's finished pain. making out, so he's like all wired and. Yep, I totally. And, well, making out and then fighting. Yeah. Um. So he's got a lot, a lot of stuff going on for him. His blood's boiling, and, and for more than one reason. Uh, but I had a similar outburst in a health class. Um, oh no! So we were talking about pregnancy and like, you know, like the term and like basically, you know, what goes through with ba- with. Uh, with pregnancy and stuff and it said that like you know during pregnancy the woman is off of her period because the whole reason we have a period is because the egg isn't fertilized and all this stuff and louder than i intended i went oh lucky that's funny and uh no one else in the class seemed to vibe with me at least not uh noticeably wait really is it yeah i i don't have a period i am a non-menstruating person do isn't it Periods suck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think, so this was probably, it may have even been sixth grade because I got my period the summer before sixth grade. So it was either, probably either sixth or seventh because maybe by eighth grade, people would have been more chill. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. But like, Still some taboo, maybe it was maybe. just a factor of it being middle school. Yeah. And I mean, there's every possibility that not all of the eventually menstruating people in that classroom were menstruating. So there, like, there were some people. It is conceivable that some people don't start their period till high school. Oh, the awkwardness um, of so sex yeah. Ed I and was just like, oh. and I, and you know me, I'm an open book. I don't give a fuck what I talk about. So yeah, I just think that like not everybody was down to talk about their periods. Like I was, so just like, oh, lucky. Yeah, not everyone was was down for That's that. Funny. Well, so. My first job out of college, I was a sex educator. You had a great job. And looking back, I don't think I was that good at it, Allie. I hope that I hope that some of my at least your job description was cool. I did. I do pride myself when there was like a curriculum that it was very sex negative, and they're doing it in this too. They're only talking about the consequences of sex and like court. Like we do need to think about what can happen from sex, but also like I think sometimes not talking about. The good parts about it, like, just pushes people further into whatever, whatever, whatever. Sure. Um, I think there needs to be a sentence or two about, like, yeah, there's a lot of good things about it. But you need to understand the consequences and how to prevent them and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. So here's 
negotiation tactics or here's some condoms. Here's, I hope mm-hmm. that I always, I hated that job too. My boss was, I hope she's not listening to this. That sucks because that's, that should be a cool job. I always mustered the courage to get so jazzed about birth control. Birth control really is fucking magic when you think about it. That is some cool shit. We have found there are so many different methods of birth control out there too. If one doesn't work, they're not all going to work for you. They're, some of them are really bad for some people, really great for them. You can find what fits for you and you can find like, I hope 100%. that this curriculum that they're going through The fact through that we here, have birth control that lasts for 10 years. Still. One of the IUDs where it lasts for 10 years. Yeah. Next plan on the arm implant lasts for three. That's still a long time. Yeah. yeah there, still... One of the other IUDs just lasts goes in for your five. Arms. Super non-invasive. That gets you through. Yeah. Yeah. One IUD gets you through like all of high school or all of college. Like it's no, it is amazing. Um, yeah, it is. It is excellent. The, what science has given us. And it is horrible to say to the world that they are trying to deprive us of it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make long acting reversible contraceptive. Mm-hmm. Jordan, exactly. who was a previous guest, was um, works in birth control research. Research. Hell yeah. 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 Or no, she's going to listen to this and be like, it's not exactly what it, That's whatever. Jordan's about us. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. You're about us too, Allie. Thanks for having this platform Dude. about accessible reproductive health care. Hell yeah. So while they're talking about this, the teacher is trying to like, all right, so class, you know, what? Uh, you know, very Socratic method. What, what, uh, what are consequences of, of sex? You know, what are the, some of the negative consequences of sex? And Xander and Cordelia start very pointedly bringing up cons. Oh my God, it's so about, awkward. You know, su- stuff about like halitosis other. and like, yeah, it's so. And I, my, I, could you guys be more obvious? And like, you start seeing Willow go. You know, kind of like looking between them, like, what's going on? But nearly, like, it clearly doesn't click in her head. Yeah, Willow, you're smart. But, like... If you're choosing to not bring it up with them because you feel awkward or something, that's fine. But, yeah, you seem clueless here. It has to be self-denial. It has to be. Yeah, there's happy little lies that people in Sunnydale tell themselves. There's no way. There's no way. It's not just so obvious. You'd have to be, like, not paying attention or, like, literally high. I mean, maybe, but we know Willow wasn't. Yeah, that's true. They decide they're all going to split into eggs and do that cliche thing in high school where to try and model parenthood, you give them something fragile to take care of. We had a sack of flour in our high school. Did you you take psych? Did you get to, or sociology? Did you do that? I did not do that. I was so bummed because I had always looked forward to doing like the little parent because because I would always hear these great stories about the teacher because you would go through like a little marriage ceremony in class with your partner and then you got to like name your baby and all these things and like it just always sounded like a lot of fun and we didn't get to and I didn't get to do it because I didn't take social but their version of it is an egg an which egg. I've heard I think I've I think I've seen in other shows. Um, not that TV's reality, but um, I I think there are places that do eggs. I think it's so funny when Cordelia looks over at like a guy next to her and she goes, "You want to have a baby?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, because when Cordelia Chase says it, okay, yeah, yeah, young man, bow down before your <laughs> queen immediately. You should be so lucky. Um, so Buffy has missed class to research the vampire that she was attacked by last night. Luckily, Willow brought Buffy an egg to take care of that she was assigned. And Xander's clear on what this whole thing is. He says it's the whole sex leads to responsibility thing, the lesson they're teaching us. And then he says the quiet part out loud. He says, you've got to keep it safe and teach it Christian values. (laughs) So funny. Which the, you know, because he's good. I mean, because from, coming from Xander, it's clearly, it's clearly a joke. He's p- clearly being flippant. Uh, and I love this. And Buffy goes, well, or, or Willow goes, well, my egg's Jewish. And he goes, well, then you can teach him dreidel, that dreidel song. Yeah. <laughs> and so it turns funny. out that Buffy is a single mom because there was an <laughs> odd number of students in class. 
Her reaction is so good. Poor Buffy. She's just. So I'm destined to turn into my mom. <laughs> yeah, that's a that is a way that I differ from Buffy. Uh, I I fear that I won't turn into uh, the parent my mom is. You will. You're a badass, just like your mom is. Yeah, but I doubtly won't make nearly as much money. We don't. Know, you're not. So. When you make, when you are black cat, you're gonna make more money, actually. So. Or maybe I'm I'm still I'm still banking on that. Like, I don't have I need to be very successful for the life I plan on leading (laughs) and for the kind of parents I plan on being. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about my wedding plans. You know, I I want to be able to treat my kids. I want to be able to send them to summer camp, you know, and I think about the way that my parents support me financially and I'm like. Not looking good for my kids. Not right now. (laughs) But uh, that is why they're not born yet. (laughs) Life can change quickly. You never yeah, know. We'll see. We'll see. Everybody keep your fingers and toes crossed. Um, so so Buffy finds out she's a single mom and she's patrolling that night. Uh, a loose loose definition of patrolling as uh she is deep in making out. God, her neck must be sore. Her neck must be sore? Because of the height difference. Oh, because <laughs> she's tiny and he's tall. Yep. Um. I. This is why I always like tried to get boyfriends like sitting on the couch or something like that. Just like you know, make the make the playing field a little more even. Because that is so funny. I'm short I just as thought fuck. About it is my not neck. fun. Yeah. I don't remember where. I just had to tell Allie a girl talk story off recording. They're making out in the graveyard. Height difference. Um. It very hot. And then, yep. and then Angel is and really And nothing cute. productive happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing productive happens. And, and actually, they're being watched. Yep. Um, the Gorches are watching. They decide they're going to kill Buffy. Turns out they're but smarter. They're on. smarter than than we expected. Yeah. So Buffy's um, going to bed. She's finishing taking care of her egg. She's named it Egbert, which I think is adorable. so cute. When Love I say that. taking care of her egg, she's like checking things off a checklist. There's no taking care of this egg. Well, she egg. has it. She now has it nestled in a blanket in a cute little basket. Egbert, so, I'm sure, is very comfortable. Um, yeah. And late at night, we see. Oh, the- real quick before, so the gorges, the gorges were were watching them. I think Lyle has a point because his brother is like, I-, I could whoop him now, but I'm gonna wait and and do this this the the way I planned. Well, really, if you could beat their ass now, why wouldn't you just do it now? Hmm? Yeah, hmm? I think. Dude talks of the game. Yeah. Oh, to- totally, totally. But I totally get his brother calling him out, being like, well, then why don't we just do it now? And you know, as the older brother, the little brother pointing out his illogical thinking in a way that kind of calls him weak at the same time really yeah. gets under his skin. 100%. Potentially even uh, even intentional. So yes, so my next note is Tee Egbert. Thought that was super super cute. Points is, to Buffy. That's it why is why we love you. Cute, classic, brilliant Buffy. And I think we see the egg like pop out and crawl up her body into her no, brain and worse. It slowly extends a tentacle. It's disgusting. Which I hate tentacles. I hate it. So in just like in all caps, I have ew, 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 nope. So gross. I so gross. I hate creepy crawlies. I hate the guy that turned into the bugs, the order trucker Ugh. guy. I hate teacher's pet. I mean for a lot of reasons. Other reasons, but like but that's I, one of them. I don't like the snake demon in the frat basement I but think. so you don't appreciate so like i don't like those things either but i think that's what makes them an effective monster so you just don't you don't like seeing them period full stop no somehow to me so, those episodes just aren't as good what other mm. creepy crawly episodes versus monster of the week episodes well because i, what I creepy get that crawly and, like, episode I is love... really good I love horror movies, but there are some things that, like, I don't enjoy watching. Like, I'm not scared by alien movies, so I, I, I tend to think that alien movies are, like, silly, and so I tend to not like them. Um, but, like, I don't like creepy crawly things. That's sort of what makes them an effective monster. Yeah, there's something... 
I don't like bugs. So that's, you know, one thing that thought to me is different than I don't like these types of episodes. I wonder why I'm going to have to ponder that alley. I mean, it might just be a straight, it might be, it might just be a straight, straight up taste thing. You know, like I don't like movies that don't have a romance plot. Not saying other movies aren't good, but I would rather have somebody falling in love. Yeah, yeah. And we don't have to think about it any more than that, right? I'm working with my therapist on overthinking things so much. Yes, so. yes. You don't have to explain why you like things. You can just like things. Can, I can. No just one think... asks you to justify your favorite color. Please, thank it you doesn't have to go deeper than for that. For this liberation you're giving me right now. You're so welcome. It's something I had to give myself because a lot of people... When my anxiety got really bad and a lot of it had to do with my phobia, my phobia of throwing up, a lot of people tried to ask, like, well, where does that come from? Why? It doesn't matter. Just hate doesn't it. doesn't matter. Yeah. It, if it were rational, then, then it would be able to be explained away. That's the whole point of an irrational fear or a phobia. It's like, by definition, is not does not make sense. So, yeah, I got that's That is how I justified it. I was like, well, no one asked me why pink is my favorite color. It's just an amazing color and definitively superior to all other colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I talk about like in my childhood when I got like a pink Barbie and everything? No, nobody does that. No, it's just a cool color. I couldn't even tell you if I tried. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't like creepy crawlers. Thank you, Allie. You're welcome. Okay, you can bill my insurance now. But if we're talking about things that we do like, I can't help but like the gorgeous. I kind of like them too. There's something about their banter that's just like really fun. So I enjoyed them. The so they're they're in the sewer, and mm-hmm. the younger Gorge is like, "Why are we here? Why can't we go?" And and I see maybe I'm looking for ties here that don't exist. But when we're talking about other themes of parenthood and responsibility in the episode, the older Gorge I d- I don't get their names right ever. The older Gorge, like. Tector. Talks to Lyle the, and Tector. Ly, Tector is the younger one. Is the older one. Tector is the older one. Tector talks yeah. to Lyle. He's mm-hmm. like he talked about like raising him himself and like mm-hmm. have I ever steered you off? I don't know. Even this theme is prevalent in their dialogue. That's um, a really good point because that I mean there is an aspect of parenting that does go into siblings and some more some more so than others of you know like really absent parents and stuff and then it's super on them to parent their younger siblings but i think there is always a a degree of responsibility that i would say most older siblings feel um in one one way shape or form of you know making sure they don't get beat up at school Mm -hmm. or something like that or you know just defending them in general you know like i can pick on my brother but you can't pick on my brother Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i ran into that fairly recently that's another story i can tell you off the recording yeah, you're okay. right. Okay, I look right. forward to I it. I can hate them and hate all them. What yep. should I want? You cannot. Yep, yeah, that's a 100% a thing. So in the morning, Buffy has clearly not slept well. She bites a little bit at Joyce. And then Joyce is like, oh, are we feeling a little touchy this morning? And Buffy is her usual introspective self and is like, oh, yeah, I feel a little funky. Mm-hmm. Buffy says, parenting's a pain, talking about her egg. <laughs> Joyce says, wait till it starts dating. <laughs> yeah, that was it. I liked that back and forth. It was cute. Although Joyce uses the palm of her hand to feel if Buffy has a temperature. Everyone knows you're supposed to use the back of your hand, but whatever. Because <laughs> it's, I mean, it actually has to do with like the way that you sense temperature because like you touch things with your hands. So like they're not as sensitive and like. They run warm anyway or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's supposedly why you you see people check check with the back of their hand. I don't know. I This is a complete diatribe. I have never, I don't think that I've ever held my, people around me don't get fevers. I've never held mm-hmm. my hand to the back of somebody's head and been like, oh yeah, that's a fever. And then it ends up mm-hmm. being a fever. I just don't know what that feels like. Is it, I wonder... It has to be noticeably you would, more hot. You would right? notice. Yeah. You would notice. If someone had a fever when you feel them, like like it feels hot to the touch. Not just like a warm body. Because I get I like it's it is different. What is a fever? Like a hundred degrees? Yeah. yeah. That's hot, right? Something like that. Also a big a big tell for certain people, like I know this is my big tell, is my ears get red. 
Oh, interesting. I get cold. Like, like, That's I, how like I, I have a flashlight behind them. Yeah. I mean, there's others. There's also like the cold stuff. Like if Hayden is cold, he has a fever. Yeah. Because Hayden's never cold. <laughs> so if I, there was a day I went downstairs and he was like, like cocooned under blankets. And I was like, oh, so you have COVID. You're sick. Yeah. I'm getting my fourth. My, my second booster next week and i know well, i'm gonna have a fever so folks eligibility has opened up go get your booster has it for for just for where you are or so my south carolina department of health and health and environment dhec on their website they say that you, heck? you need a condition you mm-hmm. need like a to be immunocompromised to get the second booster. But then I go on the CDC website and it says anybody hmm. can get it. So I signed up for yeah. one. Okay. Because I, like, si- I had signed I signed up. Please. I had signed up for one and then I went to get it and they were like, Oh, you you got your first booster? And I was like, Yeah. And so I signed up for my second booster. And they were like, Oh, you're not a qualif- you're not eligible right now. And I was like, Oh. Well, okay then. This fairly recently in the last three or four weeks ah uh, that was at least a couple months ago yeah so well, okay check out the cdc website so we're at school buffy and willow are are both feeling kind of grumpy under the weather uh xander is admonishing them they're taking it too seriously and there's just this really cute very similar defensive face that both willow and buffy have when yeah. he's like you're taking it and they, they both just kind of this like Oh, and they like both like kind of clutch their eggs tighter, and it's just it was very cute. It's cute, and of course Xander feels fine because his brain wasn't sucked because he boiled his egg. Exactly, cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. And he says sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind, which <laughs> does not make sense in this context. But just Every in so general, often. I am pushing myself towards the idea that sometimes not cruel will never be cruel. But sometimes no. kindness looks like having tough conversations with people, or it looks right? Like... And sometimes it, in the moment can can feel cruel, or can you know? Because a tough conversation is is tough. Like it's it's yeah, called that for a reason. Right. So sometimes it feels like you know a little bit of exaggeration. It's cruel, um, but you know, in the long run, you know, if your if your kid wants to go become a rock star and they're tone deaf. And you're being just having a real honest conversation with them. At the time, they may find it cruel. In the long run, when they don't end up on the gag reel of uh, American Idol, right? They probably thank you. Right, right. Giles says something positive though, because he's like, "Oh, well, maybe I don't know." He said, "I, I, I respect your but something." And Xander says, "I resent that," or possibly thank you. Yeah, oh, Machiavellian Drive or something. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it was. I, think, I mean, it's probably like, I don't know what their, the details of their assignment, but like, I can see where you're like, never said I couldn't. Yeah, I didn't crack the egg. I boiled right. it, but boiled it's still it. intact. I gave it vaccines against cracking, you know? <laughs> Who knows? Um, so Cordelia yeah. enters, and the whole reason that, Buffy, Xander, and Willow are in the libraries because health education was canceled and Cordelia enters and she says, yeah, you know, it wasn't, he didn't just show up, he's missing. And Cordelia says, hey, Xander. Presumed dead. Presumed dead, yeah. Which, like, we're not totally clear if that's, like, Cordelia making it up. Well, I mean, no, it's a No, 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 they assumption. say that because I wrote that down. And she says, missing, as in presumed dead? And they're like, presumed by whom? And she says, well, Me. me. And this makes sense because the last time a class was canceled because a teacher was missing, Cordelia found the dead body in the freezer. That's true. So her yeah. personal history with missing teachers is that they're dead. Yeah, they're dead. Cordelia is says something like, like, Xander, should we go look for him? And Xander's like, no. He's no. just totally flying over his head. And Cordelia says, no, really, we should go. Check some closets. Make out in the closets. Under. And again, like, could, wow, Cordy, could you be more obvious? So obvious. <laughs> and at least in this time, I understand where Buffy and Buffy and Willow just feel so crummy that, like, it's not registering. 
that time, I'm like, all right, I'll give you a pass on that one because you're both feeling under the weather. So Buffy says uh, she'll go look for the gorges to get the gorge. Is it C G O R C H gorge or gorge? I thought it was gorge. Gorge. G-O- okay. G O R G E. I didn't but, do any uh, research. I did not about. look we'll say, it up either. We'll say gorge. Whatever. That she Buffy says she'll go look for the vampire brothers that night. Angel will help quote how he can. <laughs> and they're in the cemetery that night. They're making out again. Help her work out her tongue. So there's, yeah, so there's no tongue in those kisses. That's the other thing. In all of these makeout scenes, there isn't any tongue. Okay, well, they... that is probably a uh, the oh, the reality of acting coming in. Of like, okay, we don't actually have to play tonsil hockey. <laughs> tonsil hockey. So that that's probably the uh, reality of it being a, a, a phony couple um, coming into play there. Fair enough. There, so she talks something about like she talks about her her egg assignment and the you know the idea of kids comes up. She's like, oof. I mean, maybe some point. And Angel's like, well, you know, I can't. And it's like, had Buffy really thought that he could? Like, it seems to take her off guard that he's saying that like kids aren't on the table for him. That is so funny. This is the classic. Allie behind Angel and Nick behind Buffy moment. You're like, why did you think of that? Which, like, yeah, duh. And I'm like, Angel, was that the right moment to have that conversation right then? Do really right then? See, and that's also me being behind him. Like, you should you should address issues when when they come up in the moment. Don't wait and stew on them. You know, you bring address them as they come up. Not no, that's like a circle back. Hey, I just no. I don't. Know. Okay, they are. I would have been surprised that she. I would. I too would be a surprise. Of like, well, you, you realize that I'm dead, right? Have been for hundreds of years. Because there, I can see where, like, maybe a relatively new vampire, like, still has some swimmers in there who haven't died yet. Oh my god! Like if We're you died about last week, sperm. How long does it take for your sperm to die out? Probably not that long because they probably need blood flow. Okay. Anyway, yeah. classic Alley thinking of the weird details. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, you were on Buffy's side, thinking <laughs> that this was not the time to have this conversation. You think he should have just like shut up and kept making out? Yeah. Fair, I guess. I don't know. I also see where he'd be like, "Well, I don't want to like." lead her on or, or let said, her like, lead herself yeah, on assignment sounds like it sucks because you live a very active lifestyle and you've an egg in your backpack that you're not supposed to crush that that yeah, too he could have chosen a different a different point so they I, I guess do eventually go back to making out which i support they got some hot makeout sessions and it pans away the camera pans away and the tombstone says in loving memory and just Feels like we're foreshadowing tragedy somehow. Mm. I wonder. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So we're at the school. Um, and as we pass someone who's walking down the stairs and coming around the corner, I see on the wall, because I, I started paying attention to these because you're always the one who pays attention oh, to yeah. these. On the on the stairwell, there's a big poster that says, Coming to your gym, super crazy neato pep rally. <laughs> as, some, as an interesting selection of uh, adjectives. Super crazy neato. Neato mosquito. Neato mosquito. We don't say neato enough in our society and we need to do more. I disagree on that point. Okay. Well, <laughs> your opinion is trapped. The security guard goes down. It's uh, We see he's like, patrolling or doing, which is weird to patrol, whatever. No, um, having a night guard is not unheard of. But just like walking through that, I guess it makes sense. That's what you have to do. You have to walk. You have to walk around to see this, if this you're on one like end of the building. You're not going to hear something on the other end of the. No, but ideally, you have other ways to know that shenanigans is happening other than just walking through. Sign so doesn't have cameras. You're right. Yeah, true. The basement door is open. He goes down. 
um, because that's suspicious. And he is like kind of investigating and he finds like a massive hole in the concrete that leads into this area behind a massive wall. And the security guard gets pushed in through the hole by the sex ed teacher who was yep. missing. And we see the big gross thing that's been growing under the school. And again, I say ew. And I say ew. I raise your ew and I give you a <laughs> <laughs> I did really like that exchange. I didn't know how to uh, quote that in my notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I tried to write down something too. I don't the think the onomatopoeia so. spelling is a little tricky. Yeah. But that was a, a very good exchange between uh, Buffy and Xander. Um, so Buffy sneaks back to a room just in time to see the egg hatching. It's disgusting and horrifying Thank and it's goodness. crawling around and she kills it. Yup. Thank goodness. Way to go. And I am glad that she ended up stabbing it because what she first picks up. She's just going to smash it. She picks up the yeah, iron. Yeah, she's just going to... Yeah, the iron. But then you wouldn't have enough to, to study it. So it is better for their information gathering that she stabbed it. Totally right. Fortuitous. Yeah. yeah. Um. So next day, Cordy and Xander are talking outside. and Cordy is saying some, something. And Xander says, okay, soliloquy girl. That was funny. And then... Yeah. Or maybe that was... Buffy saying that. I don't know. Someone said, okay, so the Luke Lee girl. I thought that was amusing. Uh, and then we hear Cordy behind them go, Shanice, is that your real hair? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Cordy. You so can't say that. Uh, yeah, she, yeah. Not even then. You shouldn't have been saying it. One of the few black students we've seen at Sunnydale, there is not a very racially diverse school. No. One of the first ones we see. Yeah, Cordelia then says, is that your real hair? You can't say no, that you can't to anybody. Just ask people that. Cordelia. Yeah. I remember I this was I was I was doing a rewatch when I texted you and was insistent that we needed to do a podcast. And it was around this point that I was regular sending regularly sending you commentary about the episodes as I was mm-hmm. rushing before I was finally like, we have to do this. And I remember <laughs> this is one of the things that I noticed that I I like I like paused and rewound it and I was like, surely that is not what we just watched happen. But it was. 100% a black girl. 100%. Yeah. Yep. Cordy, pretty racist. You can't do that. No, you really can't. No. Um. So at this point, oh, Cordelia has a horrible backpack suit. The dog, the bear, whatever it is. Horrible backpack. I, I thought it, it was cute. But what is, no, but what is horrible is later they're in the lab. Uh, the four of them, the four Scoobies are in the lab. They're s- supposed to be looking at the thing. And we see Cordelia's egg hatches in her backpack and out pokes the out the eyes of Ugh, her bear. It's so gross. Ugh. So gross. That poor bear. Yeah, yeah, that poor bear. Also, it sounded like from what her dad, what Cordelia said about how her dad procured yeah, that bear. That was a really special bear. Sounds like a shame, yeah. Um, so at this point, we've also established that Willow is possessed. Yep. We see Cordelia about to become possessed. We also um, did establish, too, that Buffy's in a shit ton of trouble with her mom. Yeah. Who caught her basically sneaking out and was like, you're grounded. Her mom gave her very clear instructions that she's supposed to go to the library after school and hang out there. So them picks her up. So they are in the lab investigating the the thing. And um, Willow says a very weird thing about uh, everyone returning to the mother Bezor. So according to Harry Potter, and then I did confirm on Google, uh, a Bezor is a stone that forms in the stomach of a goat. I okay, think I've got then, that you yep, researched that. On, confirmed it on Google. And it's not necessarily a goat. By definition, it's not form. It doesn't form in a goat, but it is a mass of stuff like hair and things that forms and it it coalesces into like a hard stone so it is a thing it's an actual thing it's a term but doesn't uh, feel like it would apply in this situation because no definitely definitely not so it's weird so i guess like someone was like i don't know a uh, bezor sounds like a good name for this demon so i they say, they do say bezor but then when they're in the library they don't so okay Buffy and Willow and Cordelia possessed knockout 
Xander and Giles, or Xander and Buffy. Xander and Buffy. Yeah, Dragger, and they eventually wake up, they go into the library, and they're looking at a book. I'm skipping over ahead. We can circle back. Okay. They, they're they looking at a book, and they've said Bezor, but in the book, the demon it's is... It's spelled differently. So are they mispronouncing it? Or No, I took that as, like, the old English way of spelling it. It's a translation thing. Or just, like, we used to spell things differently. Yeah. Okay, so this is another plot hole then, right? That it's called Bezor, but it's that like a Bezor. That's not what a Bezor is. Yeah. Or or it's not necessarily a plot hole of like, you know, sometimes things mean more is than Bezor one thing. Is Bezor a proper or... noun or a common noun? A common noun. Okay, so it's wrong to call the demon a Bezor. That's incorrect. Yeah, I, uh, I guess. Or maybe just someone else called this a bezor or it's a right it's lazy writing when they were like oh this word sounds cool and it's not that they it's not that they think it's it's not like they're they are calling this the name of the demon or the name of the monster it's not like they are misusing the word it's just that the word was also applied to this monster got it yeah, okay, so it's not like they're saying. like, this is what a bezoar is, and then they're misdefining it. It's like, well, this monster is called bezoar. My name and... is Nick, and a Nick is also a little cut. Correct. Like, things can be, yes. Correct. Things can be more than one thing. Yeah. Fine, if we're going to make all sh- shit complicated like that. Yeah. Hopping back a little bit. So Joyce comes into the library, uh, startles Giles a little bit. Uh, and obviously, she's upset to see that Buffy's not there. And he's, Giles is so far acting very natural. And he's like, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't seen her. Uh, Joyce notices the very strange books that are out on the counter. And Giles says, a hobby of mine, but having nothing to do with Buffy in any way. Wow. Subtle, Giles. Subtle, yeah. Way to cover up. So Willow we... needs to teach you some, some lie telling skills. Because, yeah, Willow is a surprisingly good liar. So, at this point, Giles is possessed. We don't know it when he says that, but we know from later on in the scene that he is possessed at this point. I'm curious about the mechanics of this possession, because the possession... Clearly, the possession still leaves some of the personality. Yeah, because he knows that Joyce isn't supposed to know about things. Right, and Willow was able to, you know, fake it long enough to knock out xander and what buffy yep and when they come out after they hear some screaming jonathan stands up and he knows to like pretend like nothing happened yeah yeah so yeah clearly you retain some of some of your wherewithal yeah um i love the subtle bruise work on buffy's uh, buffy's head her, yeah. on her on her forehead there's a very lovely uh bump that is starting to form just some very subtle makeup work and it does yeah. make sense because she got hit in the head with a telescope or something. Hundred like percent. Yeah. Oh, you like would. Microscope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you would have. Uh, you would have some some bruising for sure. So both Joyce and Giles are now possessed. They follow everybody else into the basement. There's this like mechanical thing about them that they all pick up tools and they know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Yep. Clearly, some kind of hive mind going on. Um, Buffy smashes the shit out of two more eggs in the closet where she and her wake up and they go into the library. Giles is gone, but based on the books that are out, as well as some eggshells they see, they put together both what they're facing and that Giles is now possessed. Yep. And then very conveniently, they hear the noise outside. Jonathan is acting weird. And they're like, okay, yep, clearly he's now possessed. And they just follow him to the basement. Um, there's been a hole, a big wall, a hole in the wall that's been pickaxed through by the possessed people. Buffy goes through, and in some fun comedic timing, uh, Xander says, careful, and proceeds to immediately yeah. trip. Yeah, yeah. The, I'm going to use the term digging very loosely here. The <laughs> digging that these possessed folks are doing. I don't know if this was a set problem or what it was, but it looks highly unrealistic. They're like tapping. Well, so you would need to. So they have like a a pickaxe that would like break up the stones. And then there are people who are shoveling the stones away. 
there's no way what we're seeing in terms of axing do anything. There's no way. Okay. Well, yes. Some of it, it was clearly a limitation of actual mechanics. But what I picked out about this creature was, is anyone going to talk about why now? I get the why here, because sure, the, we know that the school is, <laughs> Sunnydale's on a hellmouth and the school is on the hellmouth specifically. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I get why Sunnydale High would be where this monster would, would nest. Mm -hmm. But why now? Yeah, there's you know, no. Is there some kind of like cicada life cycle where it's like every so many years it comes up to birth? But like, nope, no one goes in on that. I mean, I guess maybe the maybe we can assume that the textbook has that information. Yeah, we're left wondering. Yeah, why now? Like, what exactly is this demon's end game? So they all dig it out, and then what? Does it ascend? Does it like become a bit like what? happens like what i mean i yeah. guess some kind of apocalyptic takeover type thing because clearly they're digging they're digging the, around it for it to emerge in some way shape or form so i guess i mean i guess what we can i mean i guess the way that the episode unfolds where they're only just now finding out like what it is at that point you know giles and and willow are possessed so they're not around to talk all about what it is so we can assume that like afterwards you know they go and read the book the section in the book and like okay so that's what that was all right well as the viewer i was left out of that part that yeah part. i know yeah I feel like, so clearly I feel like the, clearly i still had that thought the episode does what it's supposed to do in mm -hmm. saying that things are heating up sexually and like that's for sure puppies getting into trouble with their mouth Yep, yep. It was just and the the particulars of this uh of this baddie were just not the central uh information well, for this episode. And, you know, some episodes are like that. So yeah. Xander is trailing Cordelia, presumably well, probably because he likes her, but also to smash the eggs she's carrying. Buffy kind of doubles back to get a weapon. Um mm -hmm. but she runs into our vampire brother friends. The, the there's this kind of endearing moment between the two brothers where I think Buffy w starts wailing on the little one or something, and mm -hmm. and the older one is pissed mm -hmm. that the younger one is getting beat up. There's some protecting this there. It was cute. Yeah, I also thought it was endearing that the for the two of them that like they follow her into this base, uh, you know, to like start fighting her. But then see all these crazy people who start attacking them. And so there's this moment where Buffy and the brothers are on the same side and they're all fighting. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And there's like a, a couple really cute exchanges between one of the brothers and Buffy. Because he's like, what is going on? And she's like, it's a long story. <laughs> so for a brief moment, they're, they're actually allies. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Lyle, so his brother gets sucked in. And I was like, oh, this isn't, this isn't over. And then Buffy gets grabbed in and pulled in. There's some time where like, oh, no. And then she does crawl, crawl her way back out. She's covered Just in blood. Oh, yeah. yeah. You see the True. hand yeah, I first. Love it. And yeah. you're like, huh? Covered in blood. Mm -hmm. Cover Although not nearly as covered in blood as she should be. Like, it was clearly strategically, like, dripped blood. But, like, she was inside. She would be head to toe. It was, she yeah. would be Carrie in that blue black <laughs> yeah. stuff. Like, yeah, right. Like right. you would not have these like patches of. Skin. That was a musical like, reference, so I got that one. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a movie first, but the musical is also excellent. Keep going. Um, shout out to Haley Iberson. You were amazing. She's a doll. Um, so, yeah. so she emerges, stone faced, clearly having killed this demon, and Lyle goes, "All right, it's over." And then he yeets. It's uh -huh. fantastic. He yeets. He does eat out of there. Or uh, he yeets himself, I guess, is the proper use I don't of know. the word. Uh, whatever. Um, so they're de kind of. So everyone's walking out. Giles is on top of the cover story. Uh, 
seems like there's some memory loss, kind of, or at least some, a blank period. Thank mm-hmm. goodness. Um, although not nearly enough questions about what was going on and why we were all here. And but yeah, they're all super ready to go along with the gas leak thing. Yeah. Uh, but Joyce is uh has not forgotten. That when she went to the library, Buffy was not there. Buffy did not have a suitable excuse, and so that's why she's, you know, she's grounded into eternity. Um, the next day, they're all kind of debriefing. Or or it's not even the next day. It's later. Uh, Buffy and Willow, or Willow, Xander, and, and Cordelia are like, Xander, Willow's like, yeah, I hit you. And he's like, yep. And Cordelia's like, and I, I, I hit you? And he's like, yep. And she's like, good. I didn't mean good because I hit you, but I didn't want to be felt left out. The way Xander is kind of catering to them is really sweet. That was sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That was very cute. Yeah. And then Joy is here. Is, is she, is she says, I thought I made it pretty clear that you weren't to leave the library till I came. And Buffy says, the other side of it is there was a gas leak. And Joyce says, I'm not interested in the other side right now. Young lady, you have to learn some responsibility once and for all. And everybody is also like laughing because it was a funny exchange. But we're all also like, Joyce. Yeah, I my reaction to this is I need Giles to step it up. Yeah. Because he honestly before this should have been ahead of this. Yeah. With some kind of cover story about Buffy is interning with him or assisting him on a research project or or something. He needs to get ahead of this as another adult figure who Joyce will listen to. He needs to make something up. That is so true. That is he, such a yeah, good point. He should have been he should have been dealing with with this. He sh- he should have been getting getting more into this and saying, you know, She's on some kind of project, or there are so many backstories. Some, yeah, some that would kind of backstory sense. that would make her sound more responsible. That would give her more excuses for not being home, or or something, something. Yeah, bad damage. Or like Buffy's, or like Joyce has met Angel before. Why doesn't? Buffy, like, have him Has over for dinner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the history Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. History tutor, yeah. Right. So. I don't think she knows they're dating. No, like, but, still. but she could tell her. Yeah. She could, yeah, like, she, I mean, that could be part of the cover story. Like, she doesn't have to know he's a vampire, but, like, knowing that she has a boyfriend could also solve some of this, where's Buffy? Why is she so distracted? I think there's this, like, sense, sometimes I get this when I watch movies or shows, too. It's like, if everybody just communicated a little more, just a scope mm-hmm. more, mm-hmm. a lot of this would be solved, and you wouldn't yeah. have to be confined to your room, Buffy. Like, right. you might still be in a little bit of trouble here, but it right. doesn't have to be this way. I feel like you could have figured something out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then, like, if she was out all night, like, I don't know, maybe he has, like, really cool parents or something like that. I don't know. And there's still some stuff that, like... Maybe Joyce wouldn't be wouldn't be happy about, but at least like there would be a bit more of like she's not getting into trouble. She's just going to hang out with her boyfriend or something. Because their relationship has devolved to the point it's gotten toxic enough where Buffy was presumably in the gym versus in the library. And that differentiate like that that tiny detail is so yeah, it's enough that, you know, Joyce Joyce has gotten to the point where she's militant. Yeah. So she, because Buffy was not where she was asked to be, which, like, again, Willow needs to teach a seminar or something. Like, bathroom. Yeah, yeah, I was in the bathroom. Yeah, true. Bathroom. Yeah. Taking a big old stinkum, and that's why, while, you know, your three-minute conversation, two-minute conversation, when you walked in, I was not uh-huh. there. <laughs> also, Giles needs to be on again. Giles needs to be at this seminar. Yeah, Giles because when said, she says, "Oh, I haven't I seen Buffy, her." Oh, I haven't seen her. No, you say she just stepped out. <laughs> Come on, people, get on top of it. She is the Slayer. She is doing so much. You guys need to 
step up your end. Yeah, y'all can at least lie a little better for her. Come on. Lie better. Lie for longer. Come on. Yikes. So that's my closing thoughts. Everybody else needs to step it the fuck up because Buffy is working her ass off. And now she's grounded for life. Not being able to leave her room. Well, except for the bathroom and for school. Joyce doesn't even mention meals. She mentions school and the bathroom. It's cruel and unusual punishment. But Buffy, in her endless brilliance, figures out a way to still follow the rules and enjoy life because of this end scene here. Just adorable. She's making out with her boy. So cute. And she hasn't left her room. Yep. It was adorable. Yeah. I thought that, yeah. I, as I'm watching through this, there is a lot of them spending time. Like, I feel like sometimes, like, we gloss over and it just seems like he's always brooding and there's, like, nothing to their relationship. Like, it's not, because, yeah, it's not like they're going out to the movies, which they totally could have been going to the movies. Movies play at night. You should be yeah. having more dates. Um, but it's, you know, it sounds like they're not, obviously it's not a normal relationship, but they are spending, like, they're spending quality time together. And they are having these, like, cute interactions. And they do have more of a relationship than it sometimes appears. And it's so interesting that we've just gotten to the point as viewers watching this again to be like, oh, this is kind of a functional relationship and they're yeah. doing okay. Just, well, I think maybe you know, I got that like overall steps. impression that I couldn't have told you examples and how to back it up. But I think the show, the, the show makers have done that intentionally. Like it's right. been this kind of build up now to this point where they right. are seeing each other and they're like, Making out at night all the time. They're like right. making it work there. And then that leads to the like very like now us viewers are secure in their relationship. It's strong. Right. It's going well. But I feel like previous times, if you had asked me examples of like, well, what have they done together? I couldn't have told you. But there is a lot of like implied, like when she's nursing him back to health and like, Bill has been saying, like, oh, you've been playing nurse. And it's like, well, you know, they're not silent while she's over there bandaging his wounds. They're having conversations. They're talking. So they are, you know, they are doing things together. They are spending time. They are talking to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, again, like you said, less less talking than uh, maybe previously. But they are getting to know each other. Maybe if this episode wasn't such garbage in other ways, we would all remember this. Okay. Well, it's not just this episode. It was like, well, you know, last episode they were they were talking about like real things, and there's some uh, there's some other stuff. It's just they were. It just, I was just it just all goes to episode that I hate. fair enough, fair enough. But I just yeah, it just all re reinforces my hashtag team angel forever. Yeah, it's so sweet. Yeah, it's so like they are, and he does have more humor than he originally and... looks like he has, and. Yeah, he yeah, they so both look really happy. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's sweet. love, I Angel. Like it. I love Angel. I'll never be over it. <laughs> over what? Forever, Bay. No, I just mean over over my love of him. Oh, oh, I thought you were foreshadowing. Like if someone asked me maybe. if I, if I'll ever be over Troy Bolton, nope, never. Nope, not not once, not never. Anyway, as. As we're clearly in the rambly uh, section of things, Uh, I think that about does it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode, and we hope you'll join us next time when we'll discuss Season 2, Episode 13. Surprise! And if you're just too excited or filled with so many anxious feelings like I am to wait until the next episode to chat, send us an email at tabularasabpod at gmail.com. That is T-A-B-U-L-A-R-A-S-A-B-P-O-D at gmail.com. You know, you what? Hello. You can also say hello to us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at at tabularasabpod. Most of all, please, please do me a huge favor. Do, do, do this gorgeous gal and I a solid and <laughs> Leave us a rating and a review wherever you listen to your podcast. Oh, and tell 16 friends. No, this is episode 12. Tell 12 friends about this podcast. Share the word. Okay. Allie, 
how can people find you online? People can find me online in various ways. On Twitter and Instagram, I am at DaughterPick, D-A-U-G-H-T-E-R-P-I-C-K. On TikTok, I am Future Black Cat. And if you would like to learn more about my journey, get some not-so-weekly updates, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Press, A-L-L-I-E-P-R-E-S-S. And uh, I'm also on Venmo, Allie-Press. And as you were talking, Hazel bumped the microphone, which is Hazel's, Allie's adorable dog way of saying it. Hazel is ready for me to be done recording. <laughs> Hazel's ready for people to get up in your Venmo is what she's ready for. Also that. All of those social media handles are going to be in the description. Allie, I love you endlessly. Don't ever change. You neither. I love you. Everyone else out there, love you too. Make proud choices. Love you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Tabula Rasa Bitches is hosted by Ali Press and Nick Mercer with music by Inflaton Cult, artwork by Charlotte Fleming Design, and consultation by Evo Terra. (laughs) 